ever since the end of LEGO 9 volt trains, we've controlled them with remotes. This is very convenient, but also very one dimensional. They all require human input, uh, even all the custom control schemes I made. Back in the 4.5 volt days, we had some limited options for more automatic control schemes, but those days are long gone. Or are they? LEGO does make a train with programmable controls, but it's not what you think. It's the Duplo train. I wanted to replicate the functionality of the Duplo train in a scale model train. This was supposed to be the other half of an SY mechanical update, uh, leveraging the color sensor mount built into the tender. But between the commission builds and some technical difficulties, I didn't get around to it until now. I intended to focus on movement functions rather than sound effects, but either way, the code wasn't quite as simple as C color, do something. First, I had to see what the color sensor actually sees. I modified one of my standard control programs to print the color sensor dot color value at the end of each control loop. Immediately, I had an issue. The sensor picked up colors just by looking at the bare track and not just one color, a combination of red, yellow, and white. This makes sense since the bare track has gaps and therefore non-uniform color, but it still made their programming more annoying. Luckily, the sensor did accurately read colored tiles placed on the track. It didn't seem to like some of the more exotic colors, but I also didn't have the right tiles to test all the choices in the enum. Subsequently, I had to filter out the noise from the bare track, and I thought I could do some kind of averaging by tracking the last few color readings rather than just looking at the current color reading. Now, I did try to solve this in a different way. I originally suspected that reflections from the bright light on the color sensor made the readings noisier than preferred. I wanted to see if dimming the light would improve things, but Pybrick can only adjust the brightness when the sensor isn't sensing. When the sensor is sensing, I can only turn the light fully on or fully off based on the surface flag. Very annoying. I updated the code such that each control cycle removed the oldest reading and added a new reading. It considers a color red when the last five readings have some color. This actually seemed to work well, but only at low speed. At higher speeds, the train passed over tiles too quickly for enough cycles to pass. Still, I could work around this by increasing the frequency of the control cycle or extending the length of the colored tiles. Even with this noise reduction, a train could still stop in a way such that the color sensor got tricked into consistently seeing a wrong value. Perhaps if light from the sensor 
or the environment reflected off the ties in just the wrong way. I could fix this particular edge case by disregarding readings if the train was entirely stopped or moving slowly, but very occasionally it would still get false positives uh, even when running. Now I could finally make some actual functions. I did green for full speed, yellow for half speed, blue for reverse, and red for pause. All of these actions incorporate smooth acceleration and manual control with the same smooth acceleration should work in between actions. Reverse is a little bit tricky because the train needs to reverse past the marker or end up in an infinite reversing loop. Here is a loop of track with all four features in play. The SY is geared three to five to lower the top speed and reduce misses. The light on the controller indicates the current function being performed. While a function is being performed, another function can't be read. In order to accommodate smooth acceleration, I do need to put a decent amount of space between the color tiles, uh, especially around a green full speed tile. So what exactly can we do with this? Well, if I had a layout, I could program trains to say, slow through a yard or stop at a station. If I had a more advanced programming brick, I could even include some sounds. I think this is a pretty workable proof of concept and perhaps I will look at running it on different layouts under different lighting in another video. On that note, this is the end of this video. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do and have a nice day.